Hello there. How are you doing? I hope you are doing well and I hope you are keeping safe and sound. I would like first to welcome you to the Department of English at the Faculty of Arts and Human Sciences, Sais Fes University, Sidi Mohammed bin Abdullah Fes. My name is Yusuf Al Qaidi. I am a professor of English at the Faculty of Arts and Human Sciences, Sais Fes, and in this semester I'll be teaching Grammar 1 to Semester 1 students. Of course, I'll be teaching this module distantly um, online because of the current um, situation created by uh, created by the pandemic. So there will be a series of videos that will be posted on different platforms, um, especially on Moodle and on our Google Classroom that I will set up later and send you the password to access the classroom. So I seize the opportunity now to invite you all to join the Google Classroom and to join the Moodle platform. It's very important. Why? Because everything related to the course will be shared on these two platforms. Of course, the videos will be sh will be shared on my YouTube channel, but I can share mate other materials like, for example, homework, PDFs, and uh, Word documents and books on uh, on my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel will be just for the videos. So that's why I recommend that everyone joins the Moodle platform and the Google Classroom um, platform. All right, so before I start the course, I'd like to wish you a very happy year, a year that is full of hard work, very good souvenirs and very good things, of course. All right, so before embarking on the course, let me just um, give you an idea about the outline and the things that we'll be, that we'll be doing during this semester. Okay, so please follow with me. This is my outline for the course. So first we'll start with an introduction to parts of speech. I thought that it is very important right from the beginning to start with um, parts of speech. Why? Because I deem that it is um, important that a student understands the different kinds of parts of speech and the difference between these two parts of speech um, right from the beginning. So that's why um, um, in this video, at the end of this video, I'll have like a very short introduction to parts of speech and of course I will send you a few worksheets um, to practice, all right? Next we'll have articles. I'm sure that you studied articles before in high school. So as you know, we have two types of articles, the indefinite article D and the definite, uh, I'm sorry, the indefinite article A and N and the definite article D. Now these two articles create a lot of confusion and a lot of problems for students, okay? Some, some students don't know when to use them and how to use them and the cases in which we use um, this or that, okay? So we'll delineate that, we'll explain that, okay? The, uh, we'll use theory and practice um, um, so, that at, so that at the end we'll have a clear understanding of the use of um, the indefinite and the definite articles. After that, we have prepositions. As you know, there are three types of prepositions, prepositions of time, prepositions of place, and prepositions of movement. Now, each category has many, pre has many prepositions, okay? There are many prepositions of time, many prepositions of place, and the same applies to the prepos prepositions of movement. So again, we'll um, deal with these kinds of prepositions and their usage, okay? Um, we see them in context because I believe that the best way to understand um, things is to see them in their actual context. And of course, uh, practice. Practice makes perfect. So I highlight the idea of practice. We cannot understand grammar rules just by learning grammar um, theoretically. No, theory should be coupled with practice. And practice makes perfect. And the more you practice, the better you become. The more you practice, the easier these um, rules become to you, okay? After prepositions, we'll move to tenses. They are listed here in this slide. As you see, we have 12 tenses in the English language. The present simple, present continuous, present perfect, present perfect continuous, past simple, past continuous, past perfect, past perfect continuous, future simple, future continuous, future perfect, and future perfect continuous. Too many, right? Yeah, but I mean, they were not created randomly, okay? We need them all. We need them all in our um, in our um, language. We need them in our writing. We need them in our speech because um, every tense is used in a specific 
situation or case, okay? And that's why, as a student, you need to understand um, um, fully when do we use, for example, the present continuous? When should we use the present perfect? When should we use the present, um, the past perfect? And so on and so on. So each and every tense um, listed here, we use it in a specific situation and in a specific case. And knowing that will help you speak and write in a clear and um, in, in an effective way, okay? Um, again, we need to practice, and for that reason, I'll be sending you a bunch of homework. Um, uh, I'll be sending you a lot of worksheets that you need to um, work on at home and submit for correction using our Google, pla uh, our Google Classroom platform that I will um, help you access later on, okay? After tenses, we have conditionals. Of course, you studied conditionals as well in high school. We have uh, various types of conditionals, conditional type 0, conditional type 1, conditional type 2, conditional type 3, and of course, we have two mixed conditionals. We call them mixed conditional type 1 and mixed conditional type 2. Um, we'll study these different types of conditionals and see um, the situations and the cases in which we use them and how to use them. And of course, um, we will see them in different um, contexts. And at the end, we will do um, practice. After that, we study conjunctions. Uh, basically, we'll deal with coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions, and correlative conjunctions. As you know, the main function of a conjunction, whether it is coordinating, subordinating, or correlative, I mean, the main function is to link and to connect or join um, two ideas, two clauses, or two uh, um, um, phrases and establish the relationship between them, okay? So we, we will see the different kinds of, co uh, of conjunctions and how to use them appropriately, okay, in different contexts. Um, after that, um, we'll deal with adjectives. We'll focus on the different types of adjectives, the uses of adjectives, and the order of adjectives. When I say the order of adjectives, I mean that sometimes we use multiple adjectives to describe the same noun. Now, in this case, sometimes we feel confused what adjective to use first, what adjective to use to use next, and what adjective to use third. So here, there is a very specific rule that we need to abide by as far as the order of adjectives is, is concerned, okay? Last but not least, we have adverbs, okay? Different kinds of adverbs. Adverbs of time, adverbs of place, adverbs of frequency, adverbs of manner, adverbs of degree, and adverbs of affirmation. We will, um, um, we will deal with um, each of these types and, of course, study them using examples, um, using theory, and, of course, um, practicing them um, at the end. All right. So this is my outline, as I've just um, shown you. Um, as you see, we will, in this grammar one, in this module, we'll, we'll deal just with the basics of grammar. But these basics are very important, are very important for the understanding of um, more complex grammar concepts coming up in the coming semesters, okay? So failing to master these basics, failing to understand these basics, will result in your failure um, to deal with more profound and more complex concepts, grammar concepts coming up in the, in, in, in the coming semesters, especially in Grammar 2 and Grammar 3, okay? So please take it seriously and do your best, and this will help you um, uh, very much with the other grammar modules that you will study um, in the coming semesters. All right. Now, um, Let's talk a little bit about grammar. What is grammar? What do you think grammar is? Grammar is defined as a set of patterns for how words are put together to form phrases or clauses, whether spoken or written. Different languages have different grammar patterns, and that goes without saying. Why? Because if we compare the Arabic language to the English language, we'll find very distinct, very different 
um, grammatical patterns in these two languages, okay? Let's take, for example, a simple sentence in both languages. The simple sentence in the English language goes like this, okay? We start with the subject, then the verb, then the object. For example, John ate the apple. John is the subject, ate is the verb, the apple is the object, okay? But this is not the case in Arabic. In Arabic, we start with the verb and then the subject and then the object, okay? So we say, Daraba Muhammadun al Qurata. okay? So we start with the verb, Daraba, and then the subject, Muhammadun, and then the object, um, al Qurata. okay? So, as you see, the sentence pattern and the sentence structure is very much different from English to Arabic, and the same apply the same applies if we compare these two languages to other languages. I've heard, for example, I'm not sure about that, but I've, I've heard that um, in the Turkish language and the Japanese language, um, they start with the objects first, not with the subjects or the verb. Instead of saying, for example, John ate the apple, they say the apple John ate, okay? So uh, maybe we need to um, um, verify or ask people who um, uh, speak these two languages, but this is what I've heard. And um, we need to be aware of these differences in the grammatical pattern and the syntactic patterns of different languages. All right. Now, why grammar? Is grammar important? Or it is just a waste of time? Well, I'm asking this because a lot of people um, might say that, well, as long as I understand um, speech and writing, as long as I don't have any problem communicating effectively with people, effectively between inverted commas, why should I take the pains and the trouble to, um, to um, study these complex and perplexing grammar rules? Well, I think that it is very important. Grammar is very important, okay? We need to have an academic knowledge of grammar for several reasons that I'm going to list and to mention now. Grammar is essential for effective communication. Of course, if you don't use the tenses correctly, if you don't use the adjectives correct, or correctly, if you don't use, um, for example, the prepositions correctly, then you will fail to communicate in an effective way, okay? Grammar is the key to clarity in both speech and writing. Whether you are going to, to write something or to give a speech, if you don't master grammar, then um, what you are going to communicate will not be as effective, okay? Your message will be stuck somewhere between the sender, who is you, and the receiver, who is your audience, okay? Improper grammar can create ambiguity and misunderstanding. Yeah, it, go, it goes without saying, okay? If you are using improper grammar, then you will fail to establish um, very good communication and instead of um, understanding, there will be misunderstanding. And instead of clarity, there will be ambiguity. Okay? And here, I want, I, I want to cite two very good quotes by um, two um, people. Okay? Uh, B.R. Myers, this is an American author, who said, People who cannot distinguish between good and bad language, or who regard the distinction as unimportant, are unlikely to think carefully about anything else. Very, very um, insightful. If you are, um, if you are unaware of um, the differences between good and bad language, and if you regard that as unimportant, then probably um, you will never um, think carefully about things. So our mastery of the language, probably according to this saying, determines our thought processes. Okay. And the second um, saying is by the famous poet Edgar Allan Poe, who said, A man's grammar, like Caesar's wife, should not only be pure, but above suspicion of impurity. Your grammar should be not just pure, but above any suspicion of impurity. Okay, it should be just like um, perfect. And here comes the importance of grammar, okay? So, as I said, grammar matters a lot, um, and I want to uh, I want you to consider an example that I um, cited here. Look at the 
picture, we have a wife and a husband, and we have two sentences here. Now, do you think the sentences are the same? The first one goes, I think you like Sarah better than me. And the second, I think you like Sarah better than I. So, for those people who um, don't differentiate between good and bad grammar, this, these two sentences may look alike or may seem to be the same, right? But in fact, they are not, okay? The difference is very huge in meaning. When the wife says, I think you like Sarah better than me, here she is directing a very, very um, clear accusation to her husband, accusation of betrayal that he likes another woman who is Sarah better than he likes his wife or more than he likes his wife. And here probably there will come uh, problems or there will arise problems between the wife and the husband and probably there will be um, a relationship breakdown. Who knows, okay? But in the second sentence, I think you like Sarah better than I, here there is no problem between the wife and the husband. She's just stating that her husband likes Sarah more than she does or more than she likes Sarah. Okay, so as you see, the meaning shifted a lot from the first sentence to the second sentence simply because of dif of um, using different pronouns. Okay, in the first one we used me, which is an object pronoun, and in the second sentence we used I, which is a subject pronoun. So um, the meaning can change hugely by shifting just very very small pronouns. Okay, I want you to consider another example, and this time it is related to punctuation. And as you know. Punctuation is related to grammar. P -p Punctuation is part of grammar, okay? Now, look at the pictures here. We have kids and their grandma. And we have two sentences. The first one reads, let's eat grandma. And the second, se the second one reads, let's eat grandma. So, to some people, these two sentences look exactly alike. Especially that... Um, they contain the same number number of words and the same words, okay, except for this little comma here, which doesn't make any difference for some people, okay? But the difference is huge again in the meaning, okay? Let me explain to you. In the first sentence, let's eat grandma, it seems like the children are inviting each other to eat their grandma, to devour her, as if she were food and as if they were beasts or monsters, okay? But in the second sentence, let's eat grandma with the comma, here the children are inviting their grandma to eat together with them, okay? So as you see, a very small comma made a huge difference and uh, not using that comma in writing can result in a very huge misunderstanding. So that's why we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of the importance of using grammar correctly. All right. Now, as I promised at the end of this video, um, I want to introduce parts of speech, okay? So that we, ha we can have an idea about the different kinds of parts of speech right from the beginning. Now, what do you mean by parts of speech? What is language? Language, after all, whether it's speech or writing, is the use of different parts of speech together. Combining all of those types of parts of speech together results in what we call language and speech. Whether it, I mean language, whether it is speech or writing, I mean. So, parts of speech are the syntactic components of sentences and phrases. Based on their use and functions, words are categorized into several types of parts of speech. And let's consider this um, um, table here. So parts of speech, we have here eight, as you see, but if we add articles, then we have nine parts of speech, okay? Now, the first one is the noun. A noun is a name that we give to something whether it exists physically or in an abstract way. For example, a desk, it has physical existence. I can touch it, it is concrete. I can perceive it using my senses. So we give it the name a desk. So desk is a noun, right? Freedom, 
it, it doesn't it doesn't have physical existence it is an abstract noun still we give it a name as well right so a noun is a name that we give to something whether it exists physically or in an abstract way examples here daniel london table hope etc mary uses a blue pen for her letters in this example here mary is a noun pen is a noun and letters is a noun the second part of speech is adjective what is an adjective an adjective is a word that modifies a noun or describes a noun or a pronoun okay so it describes modifies or give more information about a noun or a pronoun examples of adjectives cold hot rainy cloudy sad happy tall short etc the little girl has a pink hat the little here is an adjective modifying or describing the girl and has a pink hat pink um, is an adjective that describes the hat what kind of hat it's not black it's pink so pink describes the hat the next part of speech is adverb what is an adverb an adverb is a word that modifies a verb an adjective or another adverb okay three things a verb an adjective or another adverb example slowly very always well too yesterday i ate my lunch quickly yesterday here is an adverb of time i ate my lunch quickly quickly here is an adverb of manner okay next we have conjunction as i mentioned earlier in this video a conjunction is a word that we use to connect two ideas or two clauses or two phrases okay uh, conjunctions we use them for this reason um, and we use them also to establish the relationship between the two things connected or the two ideas connected or the two clauses connected so a conjunction joins two words ideas phrases together and shows how they are connected okay for example and or but because until if i was hot and tired but i still finished it okay next part of speech is pronoun what is a pronoun a pronoun is used in place of a noun or a noun phrase to avoid repetition okay the function of a pronoun is to replace a noun or a noun phrase to avoid repetition as you know um, repetition is not um, recommended when we are speaking and writing because it creates redundancy and awkwardness in style so it better um, avoid repetition and replace nouns and noun phrases with pronouns let me give you an example sarah is a good student sarah studies mathematics okay so here we have two um, clauses sarah is a good student sarah studies mathematics here i have the repetition of sarah two times okay so instead of using sarah in the second clause i need to replace it with a pronoun and say sarah is a good student sarah uh, I'm, I'm sorry she is or she studies mathematics okay um, we have different kinds of pronouns. We have subject pronouns, we have object pronouns, we have possessive pronouns, we have reflexive pronouns. So all of these kinds of pronouns, we will try to um, delineate them and um, study them in details. Next category, verb. A verb shows an action or a state of being. Okay, a verb shows an action or a state of being. Speak, ride, run, jump, is um have all our um, verbs i listen to the word and then repeat it in this example listen is a verb and repeat is a verb um, then we have prepositions a preposition shows the relationship of a noun noun phrase or pronoun to another word examples at on in from with about beside above over across etc I left my keys on the table for you so in this example on and for are prepositions and the last category or the last part of speech is called interjection what is an interjection an interjection is a word that we use to express a strong emotion whether it is surprise shock amazement or whatever kind of strong emotion when we say for example 
wow, that's an interjection. When we say, oh, that's an interjection, okay? Examples, ouch, hey, wow, oh, etc. Wow, I passed my English exam. So here, the student expresses his um, surprise, happy surprise, very good surprise, um, and probably his great, great delight and jubilation um, at his success, okay? So here, as I said, we have eight um, parts of speech um, added to articles, so nine parts of speech, okay? Now here I have a poem um, explaining and delineating the parts of speech in a poetic way, okay? Now let me read you the poem. Three little words we often see are articles A, N, and D. We use them, an axe, a bone, or else the man, the ox, the stone. A noun is the name of anything, as house or garden, hoop or ring. The adjective describes the noun, as great or small, white or brown. Instead of a noun, the pronouns stand, as this is mine and that's your hand. Verbs tell of something being done, to read, eat, ride, sing, jump or run. How things are done, the adverbs tell, as slowly, quickly, ill or well. A preposition stands before a noun, as in or at the door. Conjunctions join the words together, as men and children, wind or weather. The interjection shows surprise, as oh, how pretty, ah, how wise. So as you see, we have here nine, um, we have nine parts of speech. The first stanza um, has articles, the second has uh, nouns and adjectives, the third has pronouns and um, verbs, the fourth has adverbs and prepositions, and the fifth has conjunctions and interjections. All right. And here I have two worksheets for you. As you see, in the first worksheet, I have words randomly um, put on this page. And there are three pumpkins representing three parts of speech categories, adjectives, verbs, and nouns. All of these words are spooky. Um, they describe scary things or related to um, scary things. So place them in the correct categories here. Let's take an example. Petrify. Petrify. Is it an adjective, a verb, or a noun? Yes, it is a verb, so we put it here. Dreadful. Dreadful. Something that is dreadful. Is it an adjective, a verb, or a noun? Yes, it is an adjective, okay? Coffin. Is it a noun, adjective, or a verb? Yes, it is a noun. And so and so on, okay? On the second page, you have also um, words randomly put together. And here we have different headings, okay? Nouns, verbs, pronouns, and adjectives. So place, um, place the words under the correct heading. For example, patience. It is a noun, woolen, it is an adjective, etc, etc. Now, of course, I will send you these two worksheets. Um, I will share them on our Google Classroom as you join very soon. Um, I will send you also a, a password that you will use to access our Google Classroom together with your academic email. So again, I take this opportunity to invite you all to be part of the Google Classroom because it is the only uh, medium that we have to keep connected and to keep um, um, in touch with each other, students and their teacher, okay? Please try to join as soon as possible um, so that you can have access to all the materials and the stuff that we'll be sharing um, um, that we'll be sharing during this semester. Okay. Um, also, if you have any questions regarding the course, if you have any question regarding um, um, the topics that I mentioned here, 
um, you can uh, comment on this video um, on the Google Classroom um, after I share it and after you join, of course. All right. All right. So I come to the end of this video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Expect another video soon. Um, and thank you very much. Take good care and bye bye.